Hey all, so I just want to go over, um, I'll try and make it brief, a tutorial on just how exactly we go from Fusion to rendering in V-Red. So um, we've all had a look at rendering stuff out in Fusion, it has its benefits, um, but it doesn't hurt to look at another program. V-Red has a lot more control in some of the elements we can adjust. Um, obviously we're able to get to a decent level here in Fusion, um, especially with ray tracing everything turned on, but um, some some students wanted to see how we do it in V-Red, which I'm always going to encourage looking at other ways of doing stuff. Um, but there is a few things we want to do to set up our file to bring it into V-Red. Um, the most important thing I think to understand is that once you export it from Fusion, it's a, it's going to be a different type of file. And when we import that into V-Red, the way it imports it is how we're going to have to work with it. So what that means is um, any sort of faces we can't, um, if we turn on textures, we can't select individual faces in V-Red. Um, there are ways to go through and modify geometry there. I find it's a bit messy, uh, definitely out of the scope for this video. Um, so the way I would encourage students to go about going from one program to another is to just label everything up or texture everything up in a way that represents a specific material. So right now I've got it all set as um, you know, the kind of the correct colors we would expect. Um, and we're just going to ignore that. Maybe this side isn't as detailed as this side for now because it doesn't really matter for rendering. Um, but what I would do is pick a component. So like this touchpad, right? This whole touchpad um, should be one material except for maybe the faces of it because they might have a different sort of texture on it. We want to sort of plan ahead um, for things like that. So what I'm going to do is I can come down to paint or plastic. It doesn't really matter because um, V-Red isn't going to be copying across the materials exactly, but it does copy across the way we allocate materials. So I'm going to make this dark blue, right? And what I'm then going to do is make the face of these, um, I'm going to make them all, what is that color? Uh, glossy black, right? So that means, or oh, glossy dark grey. So when I bring this across, the main body of it, which is including these fillets, that's why I did the body in the darker colour, because it's easier to select uh, eight faces uh, manually, is going to be like that. And then we'll be able to edit this independently the way the step file works when we bring it across. So this side here, um, the top and the bottom I'm actually going to make different because one does have a harsher sort of texture on it. Um, so maybe I'll make the top of this side green and just for the sake of it, I'll make this whole thing green over here. Um, but because this top part's going to be a sort of glossy white, I'm actually going to ensure that my, um, buttons are that color as well. So whatever the white color on these is, this is going to match. So I just come and add it to the, add it to the body. And I've got this where it says, um, do you want to remove appearance applied to faces? I will hit remove for now. Um, we can see though that this, um, this little directional arrow I had labeled up was um, like a darker color. Um, so I am just going to go through with all of these and remove them. And we're just going to make sure that all of those darker colors are the same one. So when we edit one, we edit all of them. So now I just want to go through and hide all these uh, glass bodies, whichever ones they may be. So I can actually just close down the appearances so I can select them all. And they're coming up. I think they're in my D-pad options. Yeah. Okay, so we've got those hidden there. I think I've actually missed one from the file, but that's all right. Um, so then I'm going to open up the D, the appearances and I'm going to make all of these red. Um, again, it looks like, you know, we're just applying these really sort of haphazardly, 
but the idea is that we're going to be making something that ends up being uh, really consistent. So um, we've got that. That's all labeled up. So these are all going to be white. This is going to be white. Um, we can turn our sort of glass surfaces back on wherever that last one went. Um, which seems to have gone missing. Um, okay, that's that one. I'm actually just going to drag that up into the group now before I lose it again. Let's just close that. And turn it back on again. Sometimes Fusion likes to be as difficult as possible. There we go. Awesome. All right, so they're all in here. Um, again, I'm going to just reapply them because I can't remember when I last textured this up and I may have made them a different material. Um, it's absolutely fine to make these ones transparent, um, but because I know there's like a transparent acrylic in here, I'm just going to do it something obvious. Um, so that way when I see that and it, you know, it doesn't look quite right, I'll know that's probably something I've textured up purely for moving it across to another program. Um, so the whole main body of it, um, I've actually gone ahead and with the main body, if I just close down this, if I isolate this, um, all I've done is, let's just let that think for a second, um, I've actually just textured the back, um, so these back faces, they should all be, you know, separate offset, a separate body, doesn't really matter at this point. Um, so what I am going to do when I apply the appearance to this, um, I'm just going to select the option to um, keep the faces. So if I go gloss yellow on that and I just have the option to keep everywhere I've manually applied a face, it will keep that. Um, if I double check, yeah, so where I've got the white applied, it's on these faces. Um, and you can just come in and set it as some sort of random color like that. Uh, that's going to be fine. Uh, that's fine as well. Sometimes it's going to bug out on us in little bits and pieces and we just unisolate that. Um, so right now that all seems all right so far. Um, I'm going to want uh, these. If we have a look at these, we can see it's all textured up. Um, and I do have my, or well, my two only reference images of this controller because it was released somewhat recently. If we have a look, we can see it's just got, um, the texture on the back and after the fillet, it goes completely smooth. Obviously this has really nice detailing in there, but I'm just skipping that for now. So what I'm going to do is just select these main faces and make them the same material as the main body. So if I open up appearances and we go by face here, select that, and these blue outlines just help us make sure we've got the whole thing selected where there's a split in the body somewhere. And we want that to be the same as our yellow, so we can apply our yellow there. So whenever in, in V-Raid we change the color for the main body, it's gonna change it for these as well. Um, and this textured material, um, which one is it? It's not that one. It may be this one. Oh. I've actually got a few textured materials in here. There we go, it's this one. So I'm gonna turn that up to bright red just to make sure it's not on any of these other ones. Um, okay, so we can see these here, I think uh, referring to one of these ones. I'm also going to make these the same yellow material, so I'm just going to take it off face, go to body, and apply that there, apply that there, and so that way this will match up with here quite nicely. Um, you can try and go delete all unused, sometimes it just kind of doesn't work the way you want it to though, um, which is a bit annoying. and. We can see that this glossy white doesn't seem to be working properly. Um, all right, so this random texture of the plastic is this lower one. I'm going to make that maybe a pink or a purple so I can't confuse it with anything else. 
and this final one, yeah, is that back. And I'm again going to make it um, something I haven't made anything else. Uh, this blue color here. So it looks horrendously ugly at this point. Um, and we can see, yeah, okay. So this is gonna be fine as well here with these being um, polka dot textured and the main part of it being that dark color. I think that's the, okay. So the ABS white is working on this side and we're gonna make that like a really light color there. And if that's going to allow us to bring it across over there, see it's not. Um, I'm gonna ignore that at the moment just because that's working with a file I've brought in from an assembly, um, which shouldn't be a problem because, well, when we come into VRED, we can actually just move this over there and copy it. So I'm just gonna cheat with that. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to mention and that is lighting. Um, so on this object, uh, if we have a look at um, the image on our canvas that I have, um, we can see we've got this like blue light that seems to run around it. Um, it doesn't come all the way down the bottom, but for me, I want to have it coming down the bottom here as well. Um, so if you think about where you want light to come from, you might want to actually texture some surfaces differently. Um, or you might want to actually, um, what's that body? Um, you might actually want to create something different. Uh, so if we're doing that, maybe what I actually did here was I offset, um, these inner faces. And if this will load up with me we'll see that um, I just created an offset and I'll be able to use that whole body as a way of creating light in our um, in our V-RED. Um, we looked at using emissive materials in Fusion in class, but this is just another way to do it. Um, create a body that we can make emissive. So I'm just gonna hit save. Then what I'm going to do is uh, export it out once that finishes up. Uh, it seems to run slow when I run my recording software. So if we hit export and we'll just call it whatever, DualSense 52 onto my desktop, export that out. And one thing I didn't quite explain is we actually want to export it as a step file. Um, that's the kind of file we actually want to import into VRED um, because uh, step files just really good at going between different kinds of software for CAD. Um, sometimes it takes a whole job status. Okay, so that's trying to export it online or whatever. I'm just gonna close that. I'm gonna close that down and quit that because I accidentally exported it as a Fusion file. And then I'm going to open up VRED on my other screen. Oh, well, it's on this screen now. And I'll hit import, go from the desktop and we've got our DualSense uh, step file. So we click that. Um, we just want to import everything visible. Um, you can make it a lot cleaner if you just import the visible things and hide everything in Fusion, or you could just import all. Um, right now I'm just going to go with whatever's there, change the quality up, and there's a lot of options here. We generally don't have to mess around with them. So if we hit import, that's going to convert, load up, and Im import it into VRED. Cool. So now we have our controller and we can see that these colors all came across um, relatively well. The amber has made it look like an orange, but that should be fine. I mean, like a solid yellow. Um, what we then have to do is just position this in the scene better. So we open our graph, which allows us to control all of our bodies. And as we can see, it's brought it out like this. Generally, what I would then do is organize these properly. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and not do that for now. Uh, this is something you should definitely look at doing though, especially when it comes into making animations or something, which we'll probably look at for the next assignment. But what we want to do, um, X and Y 
and Z axes or axi are all different depending on the program. So we might have to actually just come in and rotate that 90 degrees and play around with some translation in 3D space um, to just get it facing up the right sort of way of how we want it. Um, so once we're here, we can actually just save it and just save it on our desktop as our controller. So, you know, we're not actually losing any progress if we accidentally crash it. And from here, what we can do is open up materials, which opens up this window. Um, and then we can go about actually creating the materials we want. So there's a couple ways we could do this. We can select them through here. Um, or if we shift and click on an object, it's going to select that material as well. So we can see it's changing this. Um, by default, it brings them in as a plastic, which is absolutely fine for the moment. If we wanted to convert that into some other sort of material, um, what we can do is right click and convert it to something else. So like we can make it a metallic paint um, and get this really interesting sort of metallic look on it. There's all these options we can play around with. Um, but for right now, I am just going to keep it as a plastic. Um, there is an option of a uh, reflective plastic material, which can have stronger reflections and doesn't have any roughness to it. Um, but I find that just going with the conventional plastic, um, it allows us to bring that roughness down to about zero anyway and we can make it quite reflective as well, but generally you want to stick with the 0 0.04 figure because uh, that's how V-RED actually calculates it with its whole physics calculation stuff. Um, but anyway, so we can actually go and uh, rename this to like top white plastic just to organize it all a bit better. It does help um, by being able to just come through and select some of these depending on how you lay them out. Sometimes just having it as a list works really well too. So this red is the back of our uh, triggers. So trigger back or backle, however you want to spell it. It's really up to you. Um, but for something like this where we want to play around with texture, um, we can just bring that diffuse color all the way down or somewhere. Um, we kind of want to get rid of the roughness for the moment because we want to um, be able to control the shininess and then add in the roughness. Um, but what's important for these is to bring in a bump texture and just go use structure. And what this is going to do when we play around with the scale of this is allow us to create a sort of rough texture uh, randomly um, and have really good uh, control of the scale of it and how it all looks. Um, you know, like right now it looks way too glossy, so we can bring up the roughness. Uh, you do want to be careful about if you're turning up the roughness or turning down the reflectivity. I tend to keep the reflectivity um, at 0.04 and just increase the roughness to get rid of it um, because I think that's kind of how it is all set up to work. And so we can make these quite small, make that a little bit more intense. So you can really um, get an exact sort of um, uh, type that you really want. Um, now, one of the things we can do with this is actually, because um, we want this we want this surface here to be the same sort of color. We just want it to not have the bumps on it. So we can hit this duplicate and that's going to be trigger back one, and we'll just call this trigger side. And what we can do now is, if we shift click on one of our trigger, we know it's this surface style. Um, so when we change these, it does that. And what we can do is, if we right click and select nodes, that's going to select everything that has that texture on it, um, which is all these little interfaces, the top face and all that. And if we click trigger side and then go apply to selected node. So what that does is it applies the selected material to all the bodies you have selected. 
and we do that and it applies it all. Now all we have to do is we can turn the bump intensity down so it's very fine or we could turn it off in uh, completely so it's super smooth. It has the same roughness but we, what's important I find is that it has the same color. Now you can come in and copy these values but if you don't change anything on there it's going to keep the same color which is pretty much exactly what we want and you know we might want to have a little bit of bump on the texture it might be a bit hard to see on the video but there is if we zoom right in here or down on this surface we can see it isn't perfectly flat which generally you might actually find on a controller um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the roughness as it is. I'll give that a bit of a matte texture. And once we've actually cleared this of everything, we can actually hit removed unused materials and it gets rid of it. So I might do the same thing for this top white plastic. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. I'm going to click this down here, which is our bottom one. And I'm going to change this from top white plastic to... bottom and that's going to be the white plastic we have on the bottom so I've still got this bottom one selected I will apply to selected nodes and now when I hit clear that one disappears so now our bottom white one we have the option of just turning on a bit of texturing or um, bump mapping so we can make it quite fine but a bit strong and now we've got this really cool sort of bump texture going on this surface as well as there. Um, we want this sort of top area and the back here to be um, similar if not the same to this one here. So for this case I might just duplicate it and go um, back. So it's kind of just about controlling your materials, knowing where to apply them. And we can see that all of this has come from um, organizing it properly in Fusion. Right now we're just dropping colors onto stuff. And I mean, that's pretty easy, right? It's all working out. Uh, these little button tops here, um, that's this surface style. So we can just make it white. We can come down to uh, transparency and turn that up so when we turn it up to there it does sort to uh, sort of start to look right um, we can make it glossy um, this depends depending on the ray tracing it might look all right um, so this is one of these things you've got to kind of have a look uh, with ray tracing turned on to see how well it renders out you might find that you want to possibly convert it to a glass material and glass materials do tend to show up really well in V-RED, so I would be inclined to go with a glass material um, for now. And I'd probably be happy to just leave it at that. Um, so I'll just call this clear button. Delete unused if there's any I missed. Uh, then we have, yeah, we can have a look at this pink section. I'm just going to uh, make these black like that. And I will maybe just reduce the roughness so we get a bit of a distinction here. And then we can actually come and even just drag it straight onto this. Because in Fusion, these, this material up here was different from that one, even though they were on the same body. Um, so we can call that Thumbstick Main. stick main and when we shift and click this we'll see that yeah it does affect both of them which is kind of cool um, because they've already been mapped out now we could um, go about importing a texture onto it or something because it had a weird sort of star but at this point I am just still going to use another bump texture um, scale it down like that and generally you want that to be pretty rough so it's really easy to get something that might actually uh, look like a rubber like if you've seen a thumbstick you'll find that that looks pretty accurate to the type of rubber they have um, sometimes they are a bit shiny especially when the controller's new 
And then the last main area we have, um, I'm also going to do something really cool, which is hit Control S to save, um, or hit save up there. It is very important to save your work as you go. And what we can actually do is come through and select materials and go select node. Okay, so I didn't rename that. So if we go through these ones and we're not sure what they do, we can just right click it, select node, and then we can rename these. So this will be thumbstick top. Uh, this one here, if we select the node, is going to be... Uh, what is that going to be? Okay, so that's going to be the main body of this area. Um, at this point, I'm probably happy to just make that the same sort of grey as the main body, um, which is that trigger side. And we might just call this like um, main body instead, because the triggers really are sort of like not as important. So I'll just select that and apply it to the selected nodes to make that that gray color. Um, so now that's been used, if we clear it, it goes away. Now we've got this, uh, which we, if we select the node, I think this is just um, some sort of backing underbody that I had. Um, this is something I forgot to turn off in Fusion. So now we've got that node selected, we can see it's another thing that says main body. Um, if I unisolate it, and we have a look and turn it on and off. Nothing's showing or hiding. I think there's a little bit of an issue down here with this gap. So maybe I'll just turn that on and apply the white to it. Um, so that's just an error I had in my modeling because I didn't seal off this surface properly. Doesn't really matter that much. Um, but right now everything's looking pretty good. We've still got this surface style, which is the touchpad. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually make the touchpad like a, a really glossy sort of black. Maybe not in completely glossy, but something like that. Um, and we might even want the tiniest bit of texture on it. Um, so having a little bit of structure on the surface really does add a lot of depth to your renders, even if it might not look like it. Just some of the ways these little areas can um, have a little bit of a pattern to them, like that little bumpiness, it makes it real. Nothing in life is super completely flat, um, you know, unless we're looking at glass or something like that. But that all seems to work well. If I clear these, so we'll just rename that to touchpad. And now the only thing left over is this um, surface style I have on the top. Um, so this was to kind of mimic a light. Um, it can get quite, well, uh, it can get quite tricky when it's like this. So if you want to make it, um, it's called incandescent. So it's how much, uh, light this actual object puts out. So if I make that white, uh, I mean, sorry, um, light blue incandescence, um, and just turn down these because we don't want it to cast shadows. That's going to really slow down our um, rendering. But it doesn't do anything here. But when we turn on ray tracing, we can see that it's pushing this light out onto these um, onto these surfaces, which is actually looking pretty cool. Although sometimes we get some issues with it showing up like that, but it can look really cool rendering out across there. We can also just bring in our own lights in. Um, in V-Red. So what I'm going to do is this is if we select the node of that I can actually just rename this as sort of like touchpad light. So we can just hide that body um, when we're not using it and what we can do is look at maybe bringing in a light um, across the whole object or bring in one just in this point. So what I want to go is scene, create light, and you can make lights of different shapes, um, discs, points, whatever. So if we just have a point light and we can try and find where that's been brought in. Uh, I don't actually see that where it happened. So I'm just going to go light editor open that up and for some reason it didn't actually create it so I'm just going to go down here and go point light 
if I click transform, it's going to show me where I can start moving this light around from. So it puts it in the bottom of the scene and I'm just going to bring that up the top. Um, I generally find that with lights in V-Red, when it comes to us doing our renderings and stuff, we want to turn off shadows. That we can get some interesting effects, but um, especially on the shadow material, we don't want it. Um, it can work if it's showing it onto the body, but even then, um, sometimes just uh, turning down the material shadow intensity because we don't want shadows to be cast along by lighting we're using to sort of bring a glow to our scene or something like that. Um, so oftentimes I find that we can turn it off. Um, and if we want to play around with bringing in light across the whole body, we can do that. We can turn down the intensity to give it like a soft glow um, to add, you know, something to the scene if we want it to look warm or... Um, yeah, if we want it to look warm or if we want to light up one area compared to the other, if we want to really try and pop out a specific highlight, um, depending on where we set up our render, we can maybe blow it out. Um, if we want this side to be really bright or if we want to make sure that, um, we get some really strong light, uh, just showing on our, uh, lower section so we can see you know, the reflection down in here that makes this texture stand out. Um, you know, I would suggest for every camera angle you set up a render on, you should be looking at having light set up for that angle specifically. Um, so it might not make a huge difference by turning them on and off. Um, like I turn on all this to start calculating it. And, you know, you can actually just come in and turn the light on and off there. Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't have a really strong effect, um, but that's going to be up to you. Um, we can do other things like uh, trying to uh, position objects in place and then playing around with their levels of visibility. So I should be able to, if that's intense, and we can try and... Make it transparent, does it still project? Yeah, so if we make that completely transparent, we can still get that light to project out from it, um, which I think is a really good way of creating lights. So you can bring them in by creating lights um, directly in V-Red, but by having it sort of planned out and knowing where we're gonna cast our light, um, it works really well. And We can play around with some of these settings, how it multiplies or something like that. I don't know, honestly, what all of these do. I just tend to experiment with them until I get something I like. Um, but something like that might only be like 50, so it's just a softer glow in that area. We might even find that um, we transform it and bring it above the scene. So I will just... One thing that happens, sometimes your transform isn't in the screen. When you've got an object selected, sorry, let me close that. When you've got an object selected, like we do with boundings and I shift click on that. Um, if it's not in the middle, just click position, rotation and object center. And that's gonna allow us to drag that up. And I will pull it back a bit as well. So we can do something like that, or we could scale it because at this point it is just a light. Um, so we could come down to here and scale it to 1.2 and we could kind of push it up over the top of all this. Um, we can do it in a non-uniform manner. So we can make that just one as it was. And if we turn on our ray tracing from here, we can see that it is getting that softer light now landing on everything. Um, and then we can just turn on and make it completely transparent. Um, but again, that's gonna depend on, well, how you see it fit to sort of illuminate your scene. Obviously now it's not really doing that in the spot, but it's blending over the rest of it really well. Um, I'm just really trying to show different ways we can do this because um, 
however you decide to set something up in VRED, there's probably about like five different ways you could do it. Um, so even just having it somewhat close, um, yeah, it doesn't really give the strongest glow on the inside there. So maybe we want to have it positioned down, maybe not completely transparent, but partially. Um, we probably want to take away the roughness from it. There's all these different options and, um, well, yeah, it just depends on if you can get something you like, preview with the ray tracing. Um, we might find that it's a little harsh in there, so we have to play around with these transparency settings. Um, for me, I don't really mind that as it is. And we can say, yeah, that's how we want to render it out. Um, obviously, with something that's actually calculating lighting from that is going to take quite a while to render out. Um, but it really just depends on how cool you want your renders to be. Um, there is also the whole camera option. So we can customize our camera much like we can in um, Fusion. So again, control and clicking sets a focus point and we can play around with different focal lengths. So like 35 mil um, and then our sensor presets as well. Not 35 mil, just a 35, but we can go flat or we can actually go like a really large field of view if we want to try and make our object really big and impressive and cool. Um, somewhere around the 30s is pretty standard, I find. Um, and we can play around with a whole bunch of other options. So like uh, depth of field. Um, for this one, you have to have uh, anti-aliasing turned on, which is this. Um, so right now what it's doing is blurring around our object as those the depth of field. So once we have that selected, we have to shift and click. Uh, sorry, uh, depth of field. I think it's set way too high. Let's go. Oh, that's way too high. So if we come down to... F90, maybe. So we can play around with the depth of field to set the outsides to be a bit blurrier. Um, but again, that's one of those things you're going to have to experiment with. Um, like double clicking on there is going to change it to like that sort of area, but um, yeah, it starts to look pretty wacky if you do it way too high. So maybe something like 5.6 where it keeps everything here in focus, um, but it starts to um, blur out the background. So like right there. Um, we can do something where that's in focus, it blurs out what's close to it. Um, and it can start to look really interesting. So, oops, I've just lost it. Um, so there's heaps of different options we can go with. Um, you might even find that just turning depth of field off works and you can just blur stuff later. Um, that's totally an option. Um, image processing, we can play around with all the ways we do tones, color correction, um, really good way of just quickly changing the white balance. So if we want to make it look cooler or warmer, that's how you change that really easily. So you might find that if you want to make it look really cool, as in cool tones, you can just go to 6000 and it gives it a little bit of that. Um, glow, this is where certain areas where there's light start to pop. So where the lighting is here, right? By turning on that glow, it starts to look really sort of bright and blows out. Um, that can be really good, I think. Um, and then if you turn on ray tracing, you can sometimes get it popping off the other surfaces it touches. Um, I find glow works ex excellently with that. Um, then you've got the option of glare, which is the same sort of thing, but 
more of like a lens glare effect. Um, you can change how intense they are, the thresholds of them, how big they are. Um, then you can even turn on lens flares as well. So there's heaps of options through here. Um, so leaving that kind of how it is at the moment, we can also look at um, rendering this into a scene. Um, so if we go to our asset manager, we can come across to environments, example assets, and this is where we can put in some scenes to use, maybe not so much as a backdrop, but just to get different lighting. Um, so one of the cool ones is like the Berlin Plaza at night. It's going to put some really cool reflections on our object. Um, and we can start to see what it looks like in different environments. You can also go online um, and find other resources. A really good website is HDR, HDRI Haven. Um, where you can find heaps of scenes that you can locate your object into. Um, but we might do a really in-depth tutorial on that in the future. Um, but, you know, right now we can stick with the basic studio. Um, but we might want to actually select our object, minimize that, so we're selecting everything, and um, go about maybe transforming it in space a little bit more interestingly. Um, pressing Shift W, Shift E, and Shift R changes between Scale, Rotate, and um, Transform. So we can rotate our object up really easily, play around with our zoom. Um, and, you know, let's just say we're happy with this. I could absolutely go on for ages, um, but what I want to do, maybe I'll just uh, change around the focal length a bit. To skew it up a bit more, something like that. Um, come across to render and I just want to rotate that slightly like that. Um, come across to render and when we come to advance, a really, uh, sorry that's camera, uh, render opened up on my other screen. Um, we go to display output, turn on snapshot frame. So what that does is when we set our output, so right now I'm just going to go um, maybe I should go something quite low, even 800 by 600, um, if I've got anti-aliasing turned off. It shows exactly what's going to be rendered by this output frame, and that's exactly what we want to do. We also generally want to hide our environment from the render. So if we open up materials, and we find our studio, uh, let's just make sure we're working on that. So you can come to environment. He can actually select through all the other environments. Um, so it can be a really good way of just cycling through them. You can even render them all on the one. So I might actually render it on this one. Um, just because it looks a bit better on the thumbsticks. doesn't really matter. Um, but what you will want to do now is um, when you've got it on there, you come across here and you have to click modify. And if you turn off is visible, this is going to allow us to render without a background properly. So you have to turn it off whether it's visible or not. Come down, make sure export alpha channel is enabled. And then we can render it out. Now we can hit render as it is. Um, this is going to render it out really quickly on our, uh, let's just, yeah, we'll go to our VRED snapshots and we'll just call this controller. That's going to render it out incredibly quick. Um, I will just open that up on my other screen and bring it across. So we can see that it renders up. Obviously, I picked a low resolution, um, but it hasn't got a background. We can see that this is um, dark gray, like the basic sort of Windows background on that is, and that's going to allow us to drop it into our folio or on a different background really easily. Um, and even from that, the lighting doesn't look bad. It looks somewhat realistic. Um, so if we're smashing out heaps of renders, we just want to show the front of our object, the side. We don't have to have ray tracing on all the time because we've worked on this glow effect or little details. Um, we can get some really good results. However, if we do turn on, say, ray tracing, anti-aliasing, um, we do get that sort of the full dimension. Um, so then we have to go render 
and we'll just call that controller two. Um, and as we can see, that's gonna take quite a bit more to actually render out. Um, we might just stick with it because it's not going to be that long. Um, so what I will say is that when it comes to renders for the folio, especially um, what to put in, we want to show off, um, first off, all of the criteria. So for our assignments, we're talking about, you know, we wanted it to split, we wanted it to have those standoff posts modeled on the inside. So we want to show things like that off. We want to show something from the uh, side angle that shows a split between those surfaces. We want to show one without the front cover on to see what the inside looks and to see um, that we do have those screw holes modeled in properly and that our um, the little main boards modeled in roughly, that the buttons look correct, those kind of things. Obviously, real life accuracy isn't the most important at this point, but it's about being able to render those elements and knowing what to show off. So I don't want to see 10 different renders of the exterior um, just from random angles. I want it to be quite purposeful. You can have a few hero shots that are meant to look as cool as possible with the lights glowing and everything and you know really high perspectives interesting backgrounds but there is a point of doing renders to show off parts of it and parts of your work so you should be doing close-up shots of the intricate areas but don't just bombard the folio with um, heaps and heaps of renders another thing is just for your folios as well take screen caps and annotate them properly say this is what I was doing in this um, because I find that's one of the things that gets overlooked a lot as well. Um, but this is finishing up, so we'll have a quick look at this. And again, I'm showing you this in V-Red, but I'm totally okay with your folios being done in, and your renders, sorry, being done in Fusion. There's no problem with that. Um, and coming across, when we go from, so on the left, well, not on the left, but I'm pressing left and right on my keyboard, um, I might try and put these side by side. So we can get that one there, and if we can open up that one as well, like that. Oh, almost. Sorry, let me turn off ray tracing there. And we'll get that and that. We can start to compare these. So obviously I didn't let this render out enough um, because I did have it set on really low quality. Um, so even then all the detail isn't there where we expect it to be. Um, but we can see that there is the proper light being cast from there. Um, we can see it glowing out through some of this if it was coming through. I mean, realistically it probably wouldn't, but it still looks good. Um, the surfaces don't look as flat. We can see some of that slight bump texture, but even the lighting from the environments calculated onto it properly. Um, the darker tones along the bottom, the shadows and the highlights look good. So obviously ray tracing is required for those hero shots. Um, but for a lot of the other ones, if we're just showing off our main thing, we can take advantage of the fact that V-Red does have pretty high quality live um, capture. But yeah, so that's pretty much all I really wanted to cover. Um, yeah, consider using V-Red. Um, it can't hurt. In fact, it can only help, especially if, you know, you want to push your designs to the next level. If they're particularly well organized in Fusion, it should be relatively easy to bring it across into V-Red and get something really cool going. Um, but yeah, so um, hopefully this can help you um, get those really sort of interesting renders going. Thanks.